Hello and welcome everyone. It is time once again to try to fix something and today in the workbench we're working on another, another dead PS5 uh, Blu-ray edition. Uh, at least I think it's a dead one. This one has sat off to the side for a week or so because I didn't realize it was there. But now I realize it. Um, I thought it was a PS4 in that box but nope, there's a 5. So let's just see. I can plug that in one hand. Um, my recollection is this is a dead dead one. Yep, totally dead. Okay, easy enough to confirm. So power supply or a mainboard issue? That's the question. Uh, let's get some covers off. Maybe we can see if it's been uh, messed with before. You know. All right, side cover is off. Side plate, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to say it has been messed with before. And I'm going to say it's had roaches in it before. Just looking at some of this. Yeah, some of this residue. I think this could be a roach issue. Hmm. All right, let me get a little further into it. All right, I've got the uh, shell cover off there. And the Blu-ray drive is disconnected. Ribbon cable's unplugged there. And you can see marks where people have been marking screws or where they should or shouldn't go. And yeah, more, more evidence of some roach activity. So, yeah. That's where we are. Um, let's see if I can get down to this power supply and we'll, and we'll get it out in our hands and check it. All right, well, power supply is out. And as you can see, it is working. So unless it's doing some kind of a weird shutdown, which I, I doubt. Um, what is that? Where'd that come from? Oh, I know where that came from. Look at some of this stuff right here. Some of that foam. Um, so, short of a weird shutdown issue, we have a mainboard issue. Um, so, uh, I'm trying to see how many screws we're missing. Oh, we're I think they're there. Almost all of them are there. Let me get all 83,000 screws out, and we'll get this board inside. All right, mainboard is out. I wanted to show you that's a heck of a dry spot. That's a large dry spot on that APU and heat sink. So, um, anyway, board is out. Haven't had a chance to really look at it. Uh, I do see signs of, uh, you know, some roach activity right along in there. The parts they can get to. Not much they can get to with that metal shield over it, though. But uh, I don't see any signs yet of it being worked on, but I wouldn't doubt that it has been. Okay. Let's get it inside. Well, here we are inside at the workbench. Ready to take a look at this board, EDM20. Uh, I want to check the current draw of this board, which sometimes I forget to do right off the bat. Uh, that's a good place to start. Uh, polarity looks right. Yep, see the little plus sign there. So we're going to connect 12 volts into this from my bench power supply and see how much current it draws. So for 12 volts, a half an amp. That looks somewhat normal. Oh, no, we're hanging there a long time. Really long time. Okay. No, that's not normal at all. Oh, it finally went back down. And that doesn't look right. 42 milliamps is, is too much idle current. So, that's kind of weird. Okay, so maybe take, like, take a look around the board, see if we can find something shorted. But she's not totally dead. She's, she's trying to come up, trying to initialize or boot, whatever you want to call it. Okay, it sure would be nice if we could find a uh, nice convenient short. Not sure we're going to be that lucky on this one. I can get in continuity mode. Let me know that out. So, where is our obvious convenient short? Get my black probe on ground. I do see some corrosion around this. Uh, 
there's a capacitor here right, right, right over the right well, behind the uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module right there a lot of corrosion on it it's not that easy is it let me see no capacitor's got some corrosion around it but it doesn't seem to be shorted um, let me hit a few more of these other caps around this Wi-Fi Bluetooth Oh wait, we do have a short there. And that's not on, not on the cap. I see the corrosion on. So whatever rail that is, is that the same rail that comes from over here? It is. A little DC DC converter just to the uh, right of the south bridge as as the board is laying here. That's where that comes from. So, is that meter even in the shot? Okay, good, it was. Um, well, this little DC DC converter doesn't usually go bad. Um, but we could have an issue right here at this Wi Fi. The Wi Fi module itself, Bluetooth Wi Fi itself, could be bad. Let me, let's take a look at that area under the microscope, shall we? Let me crank up my microscope. I should have already had it on. Okay, well maybe maybe now my microscope will cooperate. We're gonna look in the area of that uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. See, that's the, there's that capacitor I saw that has corroded away, but that does not seem to be shorted. Let me get my meter is still in continuity mode. If I check right there, I'm not getting a short. Or there. I do there. There and this one right here. I don't know that those are on the same. That and should read short. That one. That one. There are there are, as best I recall, two rails going into this thing. I want to say it's like a, a 1.8 and maybe a 3.3. And one of those two is shorted. It does not appear to be that cap, though. I may have to dig down see if I can... Is it shorted? Oh, it is. See, there was nothing for me to make contact with. Let me get this in the shot. I apologize. Uh, so I was checking here. Right, there was nothing to get contact on, though. It's gone. I think up here I can get contact. Maybe it is that capacitor. Let me scrape down on that pad. Yeah. That would be very fortuitous. Let's uh, have this capacitor make a quick exit. What do you say? Oh, it does have a split in it, doesn't it? Look right there. Let's see if that shows up on camera. Of course, now it's going to stick to my pliers. Let's see if we can get an extreme close up. Yeah, she doesn't look too healthy right there, obviously. I mean, but there was one side I thought I saw a crack in. Well, maybe not. Let's do a quick check. Is it shorted? Yes, it is. And if I check come on back out and if I check here no more short okay seems like I've um, had one of these before it's been a little bit though <laughs> anybody happen to remember the value of those capacitors I meant to uh, make a note of that I guess I didn't so a roach 
<laughs> caused enough corrosion on that capacitor to kill it. You can see all the the goodness that was left behind there. So let me see if I can. I may have to go look up one of my old videos to see what the value of that capacitor was. Although I could take one off a donor, but I may have some new ones. Uh, yeah, I should have some new ones. But I still can't remember that value. Let me look it up. I don't remember. All right, well, I found the video in question why I've done this repair before, number 87. Um, same type area, uh, roaches had gotten to, but a different, it shorted out a different rail that time because in that video, it was still beep, but wouldn't power on. So apparently it was the other rail uh, in that one. This one, though, it did no beep, nothing. And anyway, those capacitors are 10 microfarad. You can see my parts. I do. I did. I did buy some. I think I mentioned in that video that I was going to get some on hand. They are 0402 size tens, and these are 6.3 volts. So I'm going to get that changed out. And I'm also going to. You can see that discolored area around that. I think I'm going to scrape all that up. It's not going to look very pretty when I'm done, but that's that's corrosion taking place underneath there, uh, corroding that copper. So I want to get rid of that, and I'll put some solder mask over it or something. But it's. It's going to have some scars, but it will, it will at least work. So let's get busy. All right, well, our capacitor has been replaced. I've done a little cleanup in this area. And I think I mentioned before in another video, this area gets, you know, if there's roaches involved, this area gets corrosion because it's not covered by the metal shell. It's one of the few places they can get to and they enjoy themselves there. So I think I'm ready to check the um, current draw. This I got my, my power supply hooked up. Let's check the current draw of this now that we've got rid of that shorted capacitor. 
Yeah, that looks good. Now come back down. There we go. And we settle around, yeah, what, 12, 13 milliamps or so. That looks totally normal. I think we have a working board here. Um, let me uh, just clean up, you know, this you know area around the APU, that, that uh, oxidized area of the APU. I should say. Let me clean that up some on that end, the heat sink, and we'll give this board a test. How's that sound? All right. Does it look a little bit better? Just a little bit better? Okay. Let me slip this together and give it a test. All right, we are at a point of testing. I have not bothered putting it back any further than this uh, because it's going to be taken apart. I got to take it apart and clean. You know, a lot of the plastic parts, it just smells. It, it reeks of of some roach nastiness. So um, we don't know if it works, though. Um, Power is connected. All right, let's just see what happens. I need to, I have to put a little pressure there. Well, that's good. Give it a little pressure on the APU. I think I see the monitor locked. Yes. So, yep. A roach decided to, uh, yeah, make a mess on a capacitor. On a single 10 microfarad capacitor. And that was all it took to take this thing down. Uh, okay, well, that's looking good. Let me um, do a little more cleanup on it, and I'll, I'll get it all cleaned up and put back together. Uh, I think I see some nastiness down in there. And we will give it a final check out. How's that sound? So far, so good. Shut her on down. All right, well, here we are back out in the garage. This PS5 is reassembled. I did, did have to do quite a bit of cleaning to it. It was, it's not the worst I've seen, but it was, you know, pretty nasty and smelly. So I had to take all the plastic parts, you know, put them in the bathtub, scrub it, use some alcohol. Uh, anyway, good bit of scrubbing and cleaning and let it air out in the sun and whatnot. But she is fully reassembled. And let's see if it still works after all that. Lights still work. I guess I hooked the ribbon cable up properly. And monitor is locking. There we go. So, yeah, I've got a few more tests to do this thing to test the Blu ray drive on it. Um, there was no disc in it, though, I don't think. Nope, no disc in it. But anyway, I think she's going to live again. That one little capacitor took it down. I hope you liked that one. Thought it was somewhat interesting, entertaining, educational. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And I will see you in the very next repair. So long for now.